Hi, I'm Lou, head teacher at the Cake Makery, and I'm going to introduce you to our flour paste recipe. We developed this for our classes as a much more economical paste to use, but I also developed it because I wanted to try and get a paste that combined what I actually mixed from two branded recipes previous to actually making this. I used a brand that was very much drier because it set nice and hard, but also a paste that was very soft and gave me the dexterity to be able to do very fine details. I ended up having to combine those two to be able to actually really achieve what I wanted in something that set right. So when I developed this recipe, I actually wanted to bring those elements together and work out a recipe that would both set well in the end and hold up for a long period of time, but also give me the chance to be able to really develop fine details and work with it for a considerable length of time if I'm working fabric effects or details on flower petals that required much more longer working. We've developed a guide, it's called Icings, Pastes and Fillings, available through our website, and that actually compares our flour paste along with many of the branded varieties and just shows you how it stands up against other brands. So these are the ingredients that you'll need. We've got basic icing sugar, I've got 500 grams here, I've got 400 grams in this bowl and 100 grams in a smaller bowl. I'm going to add to this, I've got Tylo powder, three teaspoons, that's CMC, sometimes called carboxymethyl cellulose. I've got egg white powder, two teaspoons of egg white powder. I've got warm water, 45 millilitres. I've got one teaspoon of gelatin, that's powdered gelatin. And then I've got 25 ml of cold water. And I've got four teaspoons of white vegetable fat, Trex, cooking, any of those. And I've also got glucose, which we're going to use two teaspoons of, two five ml teaspoons. I'm going to start off by setting aside the icing sugar and we're going to start by mixing up the egg white mixture. So this is just only slightly warm. You don't want it hot, otherwise you're going to cook your egg white. This doesn't mix in easily, so don't expect it to look like a lovely mixture right immediately. But we're just going to pop that in the, into the water and just encourage it to mix in. This takes quite a while. This is the bit that takes the longest. If I'm going to make flour paste, I tend to go into the kitchen and set this bit up and then come back. 20 minutes or so later when this will start to blend together a little bit more. So don't be surprised when it's looking like a yellow and lumpy mixture as this is. We will pop this aside and leave it to settle and what it'll look like 20 minutes or so later will be a much more evenly mixed mixture with a little bit of bubble on the top that you can see how the egg white is actually then combined with the water. Now I'm going to prepare the gelatin. This is sometimes called sponging, but essentially what's happening is that the gelatin is going to go into the water and it will absorb the water and become quite a firm mixture. And then we warm that up to dissolve the gelatin back into the water and that makes a warm solution that we can easily mix other ingredients into and introduce it to the icing sugar. So to start off with, I'm just going to sprinkle the gelatin onto the water. And what I find is the easiest way to do this is to actually tap the bowl a little bit. It's easier not to stir this because it tends to go into lumps. So I just sprinkle it over the top and then if necessary just tap that a little bit and you'll see all of the little gelatin particles have soaked up water, they change colour and disappear and as a result they start to become slightly more firm um, and it'll soak up and become almost a solid mass in the bottom of the bowl sometimes, depends on how much water's there. That needs 10 minutes or so to soak. Now we're going to prepare the icing sugar. We've already prepared the egg white and the gelatin. And all we need to do with this is with the smaller 100 gram measure of the icing sugar, we're going to mix the tylo powder that we've already prepared into that. That's the three teaspoons. This is going to add the stiffness to the paste and give it the gummy texture we need. Just mix that through to make sure that it's stirred in. And there's one optional extra that you can add, which you don't need to if you don't want to. Um, it depends on what you want to use your flour paste for, but this is just a tiny amount, less than a quarter of a teaspoon of super white which is sugar flares white dust powder which just gives a slightly crisper whiter paste though the neutral color that you get from this paste doesn't actually need it if you're going to color up your petals to any other shades it really doesn't matter if it's in there or not but if you want very crisp white paste then you can always add more or less of this according to what you want now that the gelatin has had a chance to sponge as we call it we need to warm it up and dissolve the gelatin granules into the water i also need to introduce to this the the glucose and the trex now when the gelatin is warm enough, the Trex will dissolve into that anyway, it'll melt with the warmth of the gelatin. The glucose is one of those gloopy mixtures that's really hard to measure accurately. So what I do is I put my tube of glucose into a mug or a taller container that holds it upright, 
open the lid so there's no chance of you having exploding glucose all over your uh, microwave and then warm that for mo no more than five or ten seconds at a time just to get a bit of warmth into the tube so that it's much easier to measure the quantity we need when we add it to the gelatin. So I'm just going to go away now and warm this up. What's going to happen is that the gelatin is going to become a clear liquid um, and then warm this up also so that I can add them together. So now this is dissolved, you can see you've got a nice clear gelatin mixture. By putting my spoon in the gelatin, it's also warming the spoon up, which makes it much easier to get the glucose off the teaspoon. Then I can use my warmed glucose, this has now been nicely warmed in the microwave, to just pour two teaspoons. If you go onto the spoon, spoon this way, it comes off so much easier into your gelatin mixture. The warmth then, you've got no risk that the gelatin's going to start gelling because the glucose is warm, as is the spoon. And that'll all blend together nicely. And then into this, we're going to introduce the Trex. The Trex is obviously colder, so it's going to mix, it'd be harder to mix in. But what you'll tend to find is you might just need a small burst in the microwave just to bring it together, melting the Trex a little bit. I just chop through and break it up and then pop it back in the microwave for a few more seconds just to bring that together so that you've got one clear mixture all nicely blended together. Now just be aware, you'll see I've still got a few bits of Trex just melting into here, the vegetable fat. Don't heat gelatin too much. You can overheat it and it'll become stringy. Um, you've got to be careful not to actually cook it. So tiny amounts, I've only done this for 10 seconds and that was enough to allow the Trex to melt into the mixture with the glucose and the gelatin. Now we can introduce this to the icing sugar. Now we're going to mix the egg white mixture and the gelatin mixture in with the 400 grams of the icing sugar. Now I make two little wells in my icing sugar, one for the egg white mix and one for the gelatin mix, only because the gelatin mix is hot and the egg white isn't. There's probably a very unlikely chance that you'd cook your egg white, but it just means that they start to get mixed in and it starts to cool the gelatin mixture, preventing the egg white from cooking should they come into combination too quickly. Now for the egg white mixture, I tend to put through a sieve just to make sure I'm not getting any of those unnecessary bits that might not have quite got mixed in. So I just pop that through a fine sieve. You can mash any of those bits through because they'll get kneaded together with the rest of the paste. Take off all the drips. And then pour in the gelatin mixture into the other little hole. Just keeps them apart for the moment when you're just doing this. And then I'm just going to use a spoon to bring these together. This becomes quite a sort of sloppy wet mixture. It um, doesn't look like a smooth mixture at this time. Don't worry about that at all. It's also got a much more of a yellow look until you get this really worked up and kneaded together. This is a fairly easy mixture to mix. The reason why we've got the Tylo powder, the CMC, in a separate smaller amount of icing sugar is because that gum, once it gets added to this mixture, becomes makes the whole mixture become so stiff it becomes very difficult to mix. So it's much easier to combine this bit reasonably well, first of all, then we know we've got those important ingredients incorporated evenly, before adding the Tylo powder. So there's our initial mix. You can see the lumps in it, don't worry about that, that'll all come out. Now we can add to that the icing sugar 100 gram bit with the Tylo powder in it. Just pour that in and then start to combine that. You'll find this starts to stiffen up quite quickly. I think the warmth gets the um, Tylo powder working faster than if it was just being kneaded into cold icing. Just work it together. It's feeling quite stiff now. I'm putting quite an effort into the mix. I'm scraping the back of the spoon around the outside edge of the bowl just because it makes it easier to keep the dust together and bring it combine with the rest in the middle. And now I'm going to put some icing sugar onto my workboard. You can be fairly liberal about this, it doesn't matter um, if you need a bit of extra, extra icing sugar into the mixture. And then scrape this out of the bowl, which is always a bit of a challenge. What you will find is that if you put icing sugar on your fingers, you can actually rub around the inside of the bowl and get every last little piece off. So I'm just going to use a bit of icing sugar to get this off the spoon. Just so that it helps it stick slightly less to me. Get that all into one lump. And then we can start to bring this together. I'm just padding on the sides to start off with just to get the lump 
into one lump with icing sugar on the outside of it so that it doesn't just stick to me. And then we can start to knead it. This is really quite soft at this stage because it's still got quite a bit of warmth to it. But it also feels a little lumpy. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's not smooth at this stage. And this kneading process is what's going to make all the difference to the final product. Just carry on adding more icing sugar. As you need to. It'll take up quite a bit if you've got a... It depends on how your mix has come out, but you might find you'll need to add more icing sugar at this stage if you've got a very dry day because the sugar takes more water up. On a damp day you'll find it doesn't take up quite as much. So now it's really beginning to firm up. Get any pieces off your fingers so that they don't end up drying as hard pieces and getting mixed in later. If necessary you can always go away and wash your hands and make sure you've got no crusty bits getting dry that then get mixed in later. Now this is getting much, much harder. And the more you work it at this stage, the finer and smoother the icing is going to be. You will always re-knead when you come to use this, but at this stage we just want to try and get it nicely combined for a nice smooth paste. You can see now that's got quite a different texture to it. It feels gorgeously silky and smooth now. Now I'm going to just work around my board, taking up the extra bit of dust. Make sure I've got all those bits together. Take that piece away because we don't want it to be dry. So as I get rid of all of the rest of the icing sugar, and what I'm going to do is now put Trex down on my board. This is so that when we keep the icing, it doesn't go off. It doesn't dry and crust on the outside edge. So I just take a little bit of Trex, rub it over the board and on my hands and do a final knead. This coats the outside of the icing with the fat. And that's going to actually keep a nice surface on the outside that's less likely to dry. So that's around about 600 grams of flour paste. Depending on how you want to use your flour paste will determine how you choose to keep it. I get through quite a bit, so I store it in the containers. These are similar to the ones that you buy branded flour paste in. So it's around about 200, 250 gram quantity um, that you can get into these pots, which is the same as you'll spend five or so pounds on for a, um, a shop bought brand. I've got 600 grams here, so I'm gonna make up three of these pots for around about two pounds worth. So I'm just going to put a little bit of Trex on my knife so that it'll cut through the paste easily and then work my way through to divide this into three roughly equal lump lumps. I don't need to measure it for this purpose. And then these pieces can go into the um, uh, pot and be sealed away. And as far as possible, you don't want to be going backwards and forwards into these pots when you're using the paste. So what I try to do is use it by taking a piece out of the pot and transferring it to a pot that I'm going to work from. And that way these ones stay as fresh and untampered as possible. I keep this in the fridge. If you keep it like this, I would just date it up with the date that you made it. If you keep it like that in the fridge, it will keep for several months. You can put this in the freezer, so you could put the whole of this size container in the freezer. Again, that'll keep three months plus. Um, but keep a date on it so you know when you got it at, when you made it. If you make this quantity and put it in the freezer, you're going to have to wait for a considerable amount of time for that to defrost. And a good way of using it from the freezer is to actually individually wrap small amounts, sort of conker sized lumps, if you like, or ice cube sized lumps, double wrap them in cling film, pop them inside a plastic bag or inside a Tupperware container and keep that in the freezer. Then you can just take out a small lump at a time and that bit you'll be able to work up very quickly to be usable almost immediately once it's defrosted. So I hope you've enjoyed my little tutorial showing you about our flour paste. I know I love the stuff, so I hope you go away and enjoy making things from it and saving yourself an awful lot of money. Don't forget you can also download a PDF of this recipe from our website for free.